Hello everybody, Bad Weather Freak here. I have another 2021 hurricane season update for you. It is May 20th, 2021, roughly 8.23 a.m. And uh, we have a, a quick update as we are approaching fast to the start of the hurricane season, uh, officially on June 1st. And uh, there's a few things that I wanted to share with you guys, uh, updates. First of all, let's start with the sea surface temperature uh, chart. We can see that definitely um, the Pacific is still fairly uh, colder than normal, um, but a good portion of it is starting to warm up. Now, um, are we going to start seeing a transition to El Nino? I mean, it's too early to tell, but uh, potentially we, we could end up in a, a neutral uh, year. But again, too early to tell. We still have like two months, three months for the peak of the season. So that's something that we definitely um, shouldn't worry too much about it. But definitely on the Atlantic, closer to home, we are definitely seeing that the sea surface temperature keeps going up. Um, you're starting to see even in the Gulf of Mexico, some deeper ye uh, yellows and, and kind of orange, co orange colors starting to show up. And, um, and, and if you look overall, the majority of the Atlantic is actually warming up to a much above average. Uh, above average temperatures. That's why you start seeing some deeper oranges and, and reddish colors. Um, now the main development region area, it's um, it, it's again warming up uh, slowly, but it's, it's getting there, not as deep or as warm as some of the northern Atlantic areas, but it is definitely warming up. So that's something to keep an eye on. Again, we're still pretty far from the peak of the hurricane season, but uh, something that we need to keep an eye on and see if uh, if, if it keeps getting warmer because that means a busier hurricane season. Um, some things I wanted to show you regarding this uh, area is the Saharan dust layer. As you can see, there's a lot of um, a lot of um, Saharan dust that is covering the majority of the Atlantic and, and the Caribbean. I mean, all the way to uh, parts of Mexico, uh, top of Cuba, a little bit of it showing up in uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. And even a little bit over here in the um, on the uh, 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 west part of Mexico, basically the Pacific Ocean. Uh, 2018 was very similar like that. There was a ton of Saharan dust. Um, is this, is this going to persist through the peak of the hurricane season? We, we need to keep an eye on that for sure. Um, now, as far as precipitation is going, um, you see a little bit of a wave here coming out of the coast of Africa, a little bit of showers and thunderstorms near Venezuela or South America, I should say. Deep convection here in the Gulf of Mexico or the Bay of Campeche. Um, not, nothing immediate as of right now. You see a little bit of circulation here and we're going to point that out um, soon because um, there's this area that the National Hurricane Center is actually um, is actually saying that it may develop into subtro subtropical storm. And the reason why they call it a subtropical storm is because it's way up here out of this, the, the tropical area, technically speaking. Now, they can still form just like any other storm, intensify just like any other storm. It doesn't really make uh, a big difference. Um, so now as far as te water temperatures, ocean temperatures, they're, they're very warm, as you can see. Uh, as you something to keep in mind is 80 degrees is the minimum to support uh, tropical activity. So as you can see, the majority of the Atlantic around the coast of Africa, uh, Africa, <laughs> the coast of Florida, that's very far from Africa. Uh, the coast of Florida is in the high 70s and 80s already in the Gulf of Mexico, 84 in the western part of uh, the Caribbean. Uh, the, the the Gulf of Mexico, as you can see, as a whole, is is very it's very uh, it's very warm, and that's typical for the uh, for the Gulf of uh, the Gulf of Mexi uh, Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the, if you remember a few minutes ago, I was showing you this area of Bay Campeche. This is the wave heights, uh, wave activity. Uh, so you can see uh, fairly high waves going on here in the uh, Bay of Campeche. And that's due to that disturbance that is uh, down there. It's just basically churning water and uh, moving water around. That's why it's, uh, it's fairly high. But even around the um, the, the coast of uh, Florida, it's still fairly high. So if you guys are planning going to the beach, be careful. This is uh, this is some some good wave activity. You you don't see that every day here in Florida, but right now it seems like that's the case because of those disturbances that are that, or the disturbance that is in in the Gulf. 
Um, other than that, let me show you the uh, forecast models. Let's see what the European model has to say. This is the, the disturbance that I was telling you about the National Hurricane Center highlighted. And um, that's what uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But you see how it develops in more than some of the other models. Let me just uh, kind of move this forward. It doesn't make much of it, but it definitely it has developing into something and potentially another uh, another system be right behind that one also. Uh, but again, they, they just they're they in the position that they are, and, and because we are not in the peak of the hurricane season, this is, some of these waves are not too much of a concern as of right now. Now let's take a the uh, the American model. Uh, in the American model, you see. Again, it doesn't show much of it. it. It forms and then just kind of vanishes. Now, one thing to keep an eye on also is the Pacific hurricane season already started as of May 15. So we the, the Pacific already had its first name storm, and it looks like it may potentially show, uh, form another one here um, in the near future. Again, this is pretty far out. This is uh, 282 hours out, which is way too far out to be accurate. But, but nevertheless, the fact that it's actually... See, and, and this one here is definitely a little more concerning. You see these deeper colors mean that the storm is stronger. Uh, it's, it's developing more than the one that previously left the coast. See, like the one here. You see this one here. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. And uh, it's, it's definitely keep getting dangerously close, dangerously close to the coast, uh, coast of Mexico. So that's something that we need to keep an eye on. Again, 384 hours out is way, way too far out to, to even be concerned at this point. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you is the National Hurricane Center. Now let's see the Eastern Pacific. See, they're already highlighting this, this uh, small area that is shown on the uh, American model, forecasting model. Now, as far as this area here, the National Hurricane Center is giving it a 10% of cyclone formation in the next five days. Says basically a low pressure system could still form during the next day or so, a few hundred miles south of the Gulf of Tehuantepec. I guess that's how you pronounce that. However, showers and thunderstorm activity has decreased in coverage over this system. And additional development is looking is looking less likely as environmental conditions are forecasted to become less conducive for the tropical development. So only 10% seems like this particular one is not going to be much. The one behind it is the one that we need to uh, keep a closer eye because it seems like it may have the better chance. Coming back to the Atlantic, this is the area again that we saw on the forecasting uh, models. And as you can see, the National Hurricane Center is giving it a 90% and this got updated as of the 8 a.m. Uh, update. And the description says a non-tropical low pressure system is located 800 miles east of Bermuda. The low is expected to develop gale force winds later today while it moves generally northward. The low is in the forecast to move westward and southwestward over warmer waters tonight and Friday, and it will likely become a subtropical cyclone near and to the northeast of Bermuda on Friday. The system is expected to move toward the north and northeast into a more hostile environment by late Sunday into Monday. And uh, they're giving it the 70% chance of development within the next 48 hours and a potential 90% within the next five days. So this may form, but again, in the area that it's located, again, we're not in the peak of the season. So these areas may or may not develop, but it's, it's looking like potentially nothing may come out of it. But nevertheless, it's expected to get fairly close to Bermuda. So if you are located in Bermuda, definitely keep, keep an eye out. Uh, pay attention to it. But right now, it's, it's just a waiting game. Nothing to be concerned about. Just keep an eye on it. Um, and um, other than that, um, I have covered everything that I wanted to share with you guys. Again, I, I really appreciate you watching my videos. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel so you can continue to get notifications of every video I post. And um, any questions, any concerns, anything you would like to talk about weather related, just put it in the comment section. Uh, I always reply to my uh, to my comments. Other than that, you guys stay safe. Have a good day. And I will talk to you soon.